Roses are red, violets are blue. Happy Valentine's Day from the Dub Talk crew. There will be strong language, so cover your ears if that offends you or you're young in years. There will also be spoilers, so please don't get mad. And trust me, Noah, it won't be that bad. I promise you that this isn't a trick. And now please enjoy, it's Brothers Gone Bliss. the dub talk sound studios from all over the country it's the dating game and here's your host Gigi from anime palooza i'll be sure to insert some <laughs> some canned clapping here in post but welcome <laughs> to another episode of dub talk the podcast where three single ladies and noah come together to talk about their thoughts on a recent anime english dub announcement or review a dub of a series recently released on home video and tonight we have a very special treat for you we're switching out the boxed wine for the bottle for one night only so rip open your bags of hershey kisses and get ready for the dub talk valentine edition featuring one of the most feared anime we have ever tried covering oh god no, no, it's not Helsing, or Diabolic Lovers More Blood, or Handshakers, it's Brothers Conflict! <gasps> wait, wait, my whoa, life. Whoa, whoa. Hold on a second, Dull hold on. surprise. You told me that we were going to be covering a high-quality series, Kino's Journey. Did you trick me again? I was told we were going to be yes. covering Boku no Pico. And I, I wanted Higurashi. I got Higurashi. I wanted Higurashi, but no one listened to me. I've been lied to. My life is a lie. Lies, lies. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, you can take Listen, the duct tape Listen, it's Valentine's off now. Day. People are only gonna lie to you more. Oh. It's all for you. Ah. Ah. God damn it! Who let the gremlins into the studio? Audience? <laughs> it's fucking oh, hell! My audience screwed. is already already making plans. But joining me tonight are our three contestants, who will, by the end of the podcast, each choose a best boy who won their hearts after twelve episodes and three OVAs of reverse harem romance, where the main girl has to date all of her stepbrothers. Ah! So surprised. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> You know, at this point, I would actually be surprised, but it's Japan. I'm surprised she's not fucking 13 step horses. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that Otome game where you have yes! to the horse? Oh my <laughs> god. I played, I I played a yes. gay harem game where you fucked your own subconscious in a robot dog. Am I supposed to be surprised by anything at this point? No, but yet here I fucked it well. am. Well, Megan, unfortunately, we volunteered for this shit. <laughs> Who brings the you asexual did, you to did. a dating game? I didn't volunteer for anything. Oh. You mother flippers tricked me into this. I didn't do anything wrong. Hey, I'm, I was living listen, a normal life. Listen, listen. Simple life. Mr. Punishment. <laughs> I didn't do anything wrong. Let me, let me introduce, let me introduce oh, our contestants Lord. for you tonight. Contestant number one comes all the way from Boston. She is our mom chan and is giving up her hosting duties for the night so that I can make an ass out of myself. She has a master's in theater, enjoys photography, and her biggest pet peeve is assholes on buses. It's Lilac. Say hello. Hi. I don't I don't understand why I volunteered for this. And when I mean, just to <laughs> clarify, when I mean assholes on buses, I've seen people put feet on seats in front of them. Leave their jacket in a seat across the aisle, when clearly they're in a different seat. I've also seen someone spit on the bus on the floor of the bus. Yeah, I've seen some shit on the bus. Have you seen two people fuck on a bus? <laughs> Not yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if someday I do. Come to Florida. Oh! <laughs> Hell yes, I'm there! <laughs> Next up, we have contestant number two from the Sunshine State of Florida. She enjoys sleeping and cuddling, stays far, far away from cooked tomatoes, and has less daddy issues than the Skywalker family. It's Megan. Hello. Say hello, Megune. I want to die. <laughs> <laughs> this show drove me to well, vomit. After that funeral. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and. 
almost lastly, we have contestant number three. And this is the last time officially we will speak of his punishment as I have officially put away the handcuffs and the ball gag for this very special episode. <laughs> it's Noah. Hold a second. Hold on. Okay. Down that shot. Okay, I just want to point out right now that in spite of the attempts to punish me for something, for an episode that went up over a year ago, that I am going to try and make this academic by making everything about this actually make sense to the functioning brain right now with a bottle of chocolate rum next to me to get this done. He's going to attempt to use logic in a really, really terrible show. <laughs> Well, there's it's your the first only... misstep. <laughs> yeah, there's the first problem. This is not going to work out. Yeah, right. And finally, we have a very special studio audience in attendance today who is literally just here to laugh at all of our misery. He loves a hearty meal and a stiff drink and likes to sleep in on the weekends. He gabs about nerdy stuff almost constantly. It's Mr. Spaceman Hardy. Thank you. Thank you. But I have to admit, I'm not just here just to laugh at everyone. You know, I heard Noah was going to be punished for this and having being forced to watch something like Brothers Conflict. You know, I'm here mainly to serve as moral support for my brother. No, you're not. Don't you lie. Lie? Yeah, I'm Are just you kidding. I'm here to laugh at you. <laughs> I was like, don't you fucking lie. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even watch the show. I'm just here to make fun of all of you while I do Apparently, I dodged a bullet. Yes, you did. You, you asshole. Have no idea. <laughs> you asshole. I love bullet. I vote that Hardy has to watch it after this. Yep. Yeah. I, vote yeah. Go go I second this. Yeah. Look here. All right. Look here. I well, will we'll buy put... you another tiny stuffed goat if you watch the show. <laughs> <laughs> this one will have a sweater. Let me think about that. I'll get back to it. Tiny plush goat and right. anything of bacon. I don't know what's going on anymore. <laughs> Anyways. Well, so. I'll help you out, Noah. I am your hostess with the mostess, and I am looking for a Kabe Don champion. I'm terrified of the aquarium, and I get turned on by emojis in excess. I am Gigi Palooza, as my Otome game name entering screen declares. And with that out of the way, it's time to review the dub of Brothers Conflict, also known as Brocon, a 2013 anime by Brainspaced. <laughs> That was d released on DVD by Funimation in 2016. I am out of the cage. Wait, it was 2016? I cage. thought it was 2015. I can't remember now. Who cares? March of Logic 2016, this came out. <laughs> Dumeg is like, I want to get this fucking over with. <laughs> <laughs> well, here. I'm I, playing I'll Overwatch just... right now. <laughs> I could be watching more anime right now that isn't Brothers Conflict. <laughs> but here I am! <laughs> You could be watching a good show. I could be like playing she... Brothers Conflict right now, so I mean, this is one or the well, other. Well, soon enough you should be able to, since the game will be coming to the States. Apparently, according Can't to TV wait. Tropes, which is about as reliable as Fox News. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, okay, this... This anime is perfect for Valentine's Day because it's all about Emma, our female protagonist. This senior in high school has lived with her dad, who travels for work all the time, which basically means she has lived all alone for most of her life. Until one day, her dad tells her he has finally found a woman to marry him, and she is to go live in the biggest condo I have ever seen with her. Get ready for it. Thirteen new stepbrothers. Of course, you can't shove a girl and her pet squirrel Julie into a house with thirteen boys without some romantic feelings going around. But how would you feel if all of a sudden your 13 new brothers started a conflict by fighting for your heart? Of course, Emma just wants a family and not necessarily a reverse harem of her very own. So herein you have the brothers conflict and here you have our show. Sounds like a family reunion at my cousin's house. <laughs> <laughs> you do live in the South, don't you? <laughs> He's from good old Memphis, so yes. Hardy, hardy, hardy. I thought your oh. family was from Memphis, not from Tuscaloosa. <laughs> no, they, they moved out of Mississippi into Memphis. Oh! Ooh, yeah. Tonight we are doing things a little differently. As this is a dub review, there will be no casting predictions. And as this is the dating game, we will be going through the characters in order from oldest to youngest with some bonus ones thrown in towards the end. Are you guys ready to make your match? Dating game. More Let's like the begin. dying game. Oh, fuck me. 
<laughs> and we're like, my soul. Oh, yes. Fun wait, fact, I've actually been wait, dead Wait, hold the on, hold on. Time. Since Hardy is the unofficial contestant, maybe he should look at the characters and what sure. they look like, and he has to pick one, too. He, he, yeah! He's, he's go- okay, well, he's going to pick gonna the show. Yeah. You just know he's going to pick the show. Completely unlook. Just remember, so everybody, if you need a visual for Hardy at home, just find the gif of the two evil gremlins in the movie theater, sh- like, laughing their ass off in the audience. <laughs> Spilling popcorn all <laughs> over the place. Sounds accurate. All right, so bachelor number one is 31 years old. He's a doctor, which means he's rolling in that dough and is considered one of the fathers of the household. If you're feeling ill, he's got a huge lollipop. He'll waste no time in sticking in your mouth. He's Masa Ome. Oh, my. Voiced by oh God, Jay, voiced by uh, Jay Michael Tatum. Oh, Lord. Bachelor number two is 28 a successful lawyer and takes care of more of the majorly house duties like cooking and cleaning. He's got blonde hair, glasses, and makes a mean brandy chocolate truffle. He's Ukyo, voiced by Christopher Sabat. And bachelor number three is 27 and a monk, but don't let those robes fool you. He's oh, the f- <laughs> he's the flirtiest of the bunch. Can never really can never resist an inappropriate pickup line and makes the ladies ah. drop to their knees to pray. It's Kaname, voiced by I'm not even a Ian Buddhist Sinclair. and I find that offensive. <laughs> okay, I'm let me sorry. Know. I love, I'm sorry. I love this these is, intros right now. <laughs> these are the best. The Jeez, last I love thing you. I want is Masayomi's lollipop anywhere near my mouth. <laughs> Kaname is not making oh, me no, want to convert religion. No. <laughs> Oh, I don't want the. Cr- I do not want to know how many licks it takes to get to the Queen Film Center. Well, good. Oh, <laughs> this is not covered in my plan. Gigi, Gigi, before we get too far, um, just so people at home know, uh, for Tatum, Savit, and Ian Sinclair, do we know what other roles that these three have voiced in? I have a couple. I'll just read them off really quick. Um, sure, that'd be great. <laughs> Tatum, you might know him all otherwise as Sebastian from Black Butler, Tomoe from Kamisami Ki- Kamisame, mm-hmm, Kamisama Kiss, and Ray from Free Eternal Summer. Don't uh, bring cr- up that fucking show. <laughs> oh, I bring it up every time somebody's in it. Chris <laughs> Sabat, you also might know oh, yeah. as All Might from My Hero Academia, Zoro from One Piece, <laughs> and no, 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 no. <laughs> From Dragon Ball. Not, not, not the first love monster or anything again. Not again. Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> and Jay and Claire. Hey, Vegeta. I don't want to know how, <laughs> how many looks it takes to get to the table. Anyway, Ian Sinclair. <laughs> and Ian Sinclair. <laughs> In my dreams every night is Dandy and Space Dandy, Wallace and Sir Vamp, and Torico from Torico. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about the dub performances of these characters, and let's try uh, not to get creeped out to... because of the whole brother thing. Let's try and focus on the dub performances. Can okay, we just get creeped out get... by Ian's performance then? What did you say? You're okay, gonna take I off your jeans? I'm gonna fucking kill him. <laughs> wait, wait, what? I hated, I hated that character. Kaname. Kaname. And Kaname. Kaname. no one does. Yeah, it was terrible. Kaname. It's this character that acts like he's trying to hit on you. He's doing all the moves, got all the pickup lines. But then we find out in the middle of the series, oh, no, no, I don't want to actually date you because I'm actually a celibate monk. Like, that makes it forgivable. I, yeah, there's, like, got three other Not monks. Even. Like, again, Not Buddhist even. monks that... <laughs> he's as celibate as he's what you know what no if i'm gonna make this joke i'm getting the fucking Look, uh, okay it. y'all keep talking i need to use the google machine no he's he's not celibate <laughs> have... you, he, there's no way that guy is celibate no because remember remember, remember, remember that episode <laughs> remember that episode where all of a sudden him that's and this other right, fucking monk right. like that... they double booked clients and shit 
Well, I mean, as I was going to say, no it's like fucking way. Are, the host club. They're, they're, they might not be screwing the clients, but they're definitely wooing the clients. They're it's the host club where them. I have a VIP <laughs> like, membership just... all the way, oh. baby. Hey, baby. Like, exactly. Like, Come with me and you'll be there. Like, I've seen God. renditions of <laughs> yes, nuns and priests in anime before that just seem a little off because I just assumed that the Japanese writers didn't quite get it. But I'm watching this right now, and I'm going to assume that the writers know a little more about Buddhism than they do Christianity, and it's still feels a little bit off. Hey, that boy is a celebrated <laughs> exactly. member of the House of Bourgeois. Borgia. No, bourgeois. No. I know what you're talking about. House of Borgia? Not bourgeois. So, it's now, now, in, no, to be fair, to yeah. good thank man you, Ian, man. who has never turned in a bad performance ever, quiet, he did a great job in this. But I was yeah, like, Kaname like, is the it, biggest yes. pervert creep ever, and Ian d plays it very well. <laughs> Honestly. Mary yeah, Ian's... <laughs> He does. I ha I have to admit that. Oh, <laughs> uh, he's so good. You guys, you know how much I like my assholes, and this is like yes. asshole mixed with like his soca mixed bit? with like. Wait a minute. <laughs> oh fuck. Delivered without content. No, she doesn't. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Hey, everybody. <laughs> how many do you have? <laughs> A lot. <laughs> she has. So speaking of assholes. Of the <laughs> speaking of assholes. You would not Ian believe Sinclair. the amount that I've dated. So, um, she has the finest uh, taste. I do in not. Asshole. <laughs> oh, you guys know I love my asshole an character. Asshole. Oh, I know okay. I'm an asshole. <laughs> some fucking guys. All right. Wow. Okay, but seriously though, performance wise. I liked it, but at the same time, mm. thank God Kaname wasn't in that much of the series. Yeah. I was so sad that he wasn't. Every time he opened his mouth, it was a horrible pickup line, and I just wanted to, like, make out with him. I will say I this. I love bad though. pickup lines. Like, they get another, me every another time. Another. Oh, yes. I was like, wait, what the fuck? That was Chris Sabat? Hey. Yeah. Oh, my God. Hey, Gigi. Chris Sabat as the mother. Gigi, I just wanted what? to ask you. I just wanted to say Girl, you so hot, I want to pour you in a coffee cup and soak you up some marshmallows. Boo! <laughs> Get the studio audience out of here. That's the sign my stomach says to I love that. It's getting hot in here, because brothers conflict on. Uh-oh. So, what what do you guys have to say about it, so Mom-chan? Not stuff, but Ukiyo. <laughs> oh, I instantly okay, knew it was Chris Sabbath. I didn't know that was, was like, oh, until God, I watched no. the second episode. I didn't... Yeah, I, you're, you're I right. did not. I was like, <laughs> oh, I knew it was that. Oh, yeah. oh, I knew but still, it. The, because I like, everyone stereotype of Chris Abbott is the All Might role, the Vegeta role, the the tough manly role, not mommy chan apron wearing nice goody goody house husband kind of role. So this is so weird. I do appreciate. It. That's why I can Thank appreciate you, it though. Chan. I can appreciate Thank it though you, because Director it was actually Chan. good. Yeah, that's the weird thing. It was, it was really it good. Was. Oh my god, it was super good. He was like, um, he sounds like a gentleman. He's it Prince Chris Sabat. And it was Absolutely. so weird. So, it was weird, but, but it was Prince Sabat. <laughs> it was so Why hot, though. <laughs> and here, here's the thing. It's like here's Vegeta a... in a British now, accent. I have a question. <laughs> oh, fuck. Vege Vegeta! <laughs> now here's I have the your lawyer papers! <laughs> Fuck, I was trying to drink my alcohol, Maggie. What the hell? Can you think about our mom chan. Our mom chan. I was about to say. Oh, that's our mom chan and there our dad chan. There is no mother in this series. Mom chan. Is everybody done talking about mom chan? We didn't talk about dad chan. No, no, I mean, there, there is no. Sabbath's yeah, no mom chan. What are you talking about? Female mom in this. Yeah, Ukiyo is mom chan. She, she's there for like five minutes. Yeah, there is. Well, there she's is. In the wedding episode. And I'm pretty sure she's voiced by Jamie Markey. Yeah, okay, and, and, can we and talk about the wedding episode? That was the most unrealistic shit I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. Nobody was trying to decapitate each other for that fucking okay. bouquet. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, now that now that Megan, we know that you want to get married very very shortly to the point of death to others. Uh, what do we think about Dad Chan Tatum? Uh, eh. eh. That uh, eh. here's the thing. Some of the the performances are good. But a good amount of these are also forgettable too. Tatum's is one of yeah, them. See, and I thought, like, yeah, Tatum's I thought it, is hella forgettable. Ugh. 
Like, I thought it was very different because A, he sounded almost fatherly, and B, he didn't have that weird Tatum sort <laughs> of fake fine British too. accent that he almost had. No, probably. Like, I just, I thought it was different. Well, the reason for that, and this probably goes to the entire script, we should point out too, is that with this premise of one, do one girl and 13 boys who all want to screw her, we could have gone two ways with this. We could have gone super goofy, super free bro-y, lots of in-jokes, sort of a, a parody of the genre itself. Or we could have done what the Japanese did and play it very straight, make it seducting, make it alluring, make it something that the girls will fangirl on. Now, now that's what we all thought with this writer. With this we didn't think that writer, we'd get that. Hell but no. throughout well, most of the 12 episode run, it's very serious, straightforward dialogue. And that carries over to the, the acting as well. With J. Michael Tatum's role, he's not pulling off the fake British accent. He's pulling off nice, cool, older dad Chan character. He, he's a good parental figure. He's yes. good at being the parental figure. It's just compared to a good amount of the other performances. Well, but his dialogue isn't that interesting. It's just one so of the forgetful one, forgettable ones. It's not his yeah. fault. Yeah, that no. looks not that interesting, too. Well... Not we will yeah. we will talk more about the ADR director and the scriptwriters at the end Yay! of the dating game. Speaking of the mom, Jesus Christ, that lady must have a sn a snack the size of a minivan. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> She's like Mother the fucking god, I don't get this woman. I know, right? <laughs> Thirteen and counting. Oh, no, no, no. Technically, no, no. Men, and three of them were at up. once. <laughs> You forget oh, Louis is adopted, remember? Oof. Oh. All right. Super snatch. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving on. All right, on let's. Oh, boy. Happy Valentine's Day, y'all. Right? All right, so let's move on with our next group of boys. Bachelor oh, number boy. four is very unique. He's 26, a world traveler, and doesn't live in the condo, so you'll have to catch him when you can. But it's not hard because he's often wearing stiletto pumps. It's everyone's favorite cross-dresser, Hikaru, played not by Todd Not the first time Hammerhorn. that Todd's played a Hikaru. Oh, God damn it. Okay. <laughs> Greg was Karu. Karu. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I got the joke with the casting. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thanks, Director Chan. Bachelor number five may be a twin, <laughs> but he definitely doesn't have a carbon copy of himself. As the silver-haired professional voice actor, this 24-year-old surely knows it's all about the right lines to say to make any girl putty in his hands. No. Proving that twin-cest is win-cest, it's Subaki, it's played it's by really Micah not. Salusad. Not the right word. <laughs> <laughs> and... What's <laughs> wrong? And... Marty's getting such a kick out of this. Bitch number six... <laughs> Is the Bitch, you about to suffer, don't <laughs> I you know! I know! I quit! I'm out! Can we just skip this what one? Can we skip oh, this bitch. one? Bachelor number six is the second half of the pair. This glasses-wearing dynamo is a little more calm than his possessive brother, but he also carries a dark secret that leads him to spending more time in hospitals than in the bedroom. It's <laughs> Azusa, voiced by... Josh Greeley. <laughs> dig a hole, dig a hole, dig a hole. I can't, this, I can't do the song because I'm the other half of this. I'm bringing and I ain't sexy going Josh. Down. No! no! <laughs> 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 Fucking hell! <laughs> 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 Well, see, at we least, did mine first. At least and I'm not being dragged into me. this. No, I'm not being dragged into this for can one I thing, say, Jesus. Can I say something really quickly? Because all right, well, let's quickly well, read off uh, some roles for these three lovely okay. bachelors. Todd Haberkorn is better known as go. better known as Natsu in Fairy Tale Italy from Italia and. Haruka from Free Eternal Summer, <laughs> while Micah is Megan's best boy. He also plays Yukine in Noragami, Soul in Soul Eater, and Mika in Seraph of the End, and <laughs> whoa, Sexy whoa, whoa, Josh whoa. Greeley. Bitch! Whoa, 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 hold on, hold oh, on. on. <laughs> Motherfucker! <laughs> Motherfucker! You bring up my man what? in this guy. Oh, whoa, whoa. Game, Gigi. And you get your Gigi. fucking roll wrong. Gigi. What? I am Micah is what? you. What did I do? Oh, no. You run, said Micah, just in Wait, no, I don't like you right now. Never mind. Oops. 
Oh. Whoa. I mean. <laughs> okay, I know you guys are like states apart, but Gigi, you better go. Oh, man. <laughs> Shit, I'm gonna run real quick. I'm sorry. I didn't look that one up. I did it from memory. That was the I first suck. Mistake. Can, can I just say, I think this is the second, this is the second just time. Like your taste in this no, no, no. now and try to continue that sexy Josh <laughs> Greeley along with being Lilac's best boy is oh Yuri gosh. from Yuri on Ice, Zen from Snow White, Subaru. and Su Subaru, uh. Subaru from Diabolic Lovers. <laughs> so, <laughs> Subaru, which one's the car and which it's... one's the guy? I don't know oh. guys and cars <laughs> paradise by the dashboard lights. Um, let's just May talk. May I say something I real quickly? <laughs> May I say something? <laughs> So, yes. this is the first recording since this has happened. We found out that there's a good chance more voice actors actually listen to this podcast than we were originally okay. aware of. I've just Micah's just looking at the screen like, oh, whoa. whoa. So, to that end, on the off chance that he's listening to this, Josh, I f I'm so fucking sorry. <laughs> I'm so fucking sorry. I, 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 I do love you. But I'm so sorry that this has become a running <laughs> gag, and I'm making an ass of myself because like of it. Like a year at this point, might I add? <laughs> yes, yeah, like a <laughs> fucking year. For a year. God damn it! <laughs> it's not uh, gonna end until he uh, says something. <laughs> so, sexy Josh, <laughs> if you would like, he's like, oh, to hell end, no. Please tell us down in the comments, <laughs> or please possibly on Twitter or at Anime Please make my suffering end. Please make my suffering end. Oh, I need right some now. popcorn. Hey, Chris Camp, what you doing? I need anyway, some popcorn. Now that we've gotten that out of the way. If, if I may take the floor for a second. Oh, one, gosh. Micah AU, I'm not actually that mad she got mad at that. This is all for show. Second of all, what, what up, Chris Wakeham? I, I completely forgot why we're here. Oh, I gotta give my what's up later when we talk things. Oh, thank you. Um, We're, we're talking about Brothers Conflict, <laughs> and we're in our scope. We're in our scope of the next Todd three bachelors, Habercorn. so we have, uh, who was the first one? I already forgot him. Todd. Habercorn. We have Todd fucking Habercorn. We have Micah Salasad, and we have Josh Greeley. Um, oh so boy. let's start off talking about Todd. We'll go in the reverse order since we did it the last time. Um, I thought he did an all right job. Like, he has kind of good. two different tones of voices that he needs to portray because Hikaru yeah. is the cross-dresser, but he also wears suits halfway through the anime for some unknown reason other than he probably wants to get with the girl. Um, so, I thought he that, did good. What question, the hell did I write like, down? Something about you drag there. You're kind of like girls, right? <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we're kind of I'm like girls. Right. Okay, okay, okay. I hope we're kind of like girls. I can't, I can't. Okay, my question is, my question is, <laughs> Don't is get a cross-dressing man appealing <laughs> to you Western girls? Yes. All right, I understand that, but I'm, I, I have to ask because as a, as a heterosexual male watching the... I love RuPaul's Drag Race. Okay, because I'm just saying as a heterosexual male watching this, I look at this and think a cross-dressing woman, like dressing as a man, wouldn't be sexy to me. But if there's like a tomboyish personality, that would be like someone cool to hang out with. 
So I have to ask if the reverse rule applies when we've got the reverse situation going on. I would say probably. I haven't run into or that so before, though. Or so you think. So you I can't really say. You, I mean, your manager could so be I a think, guy. Yeah. You don't know. True. True facts. <laughs> I'll say this. I've... I'm pretty sure my manager is a legit guy. I've baby. seen plenty of girls <laughs> look great in flannel shirts and blue jeans. I'll just say that. Hell yeah. I have a flannel shirt. I just realized so okay. So for one. but for Todd's performance here, uh, he done did good. Uh, he's got to be a little effeminate, and he's already yeah. kind of like he's already yeah. got that naturally uh, swishy tone to his voice when he talks. So this this was kind of like it was written for him. I will admit, because I, I, I'm part of the suffering that is the year of fairy tale. I think. Yes. Um, <laughs> Almost though. Just, Not me. I will admit that I will admit that one of my least actual favorite parts Ooh. of fairy tale is actually Todd. Really? And Nazi. Really? Okay. Um, it, 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 I just don't like. I just don't. Fucking oh, like as Todd. I just don't fucking like Natsu. Um, and I Todsu. Todsu has got a fire in his belly. <laughs> Natsu and under just, the Kotatsu. Uh, but even then, like, there are parts of Natsu's voice that are just, like... Nails on a chalkboard. Like, shut the fuck up, Natsu. All right, but what, what about yeah, this Yeah, kind of. Mm -hmm. Okay, I find Tia Ballard's happy less annoying than I do Todd's uh, Natsu. Wow. Ooh. Okay, but what do you think about him okay. in this show? Well, that like, we I... Yeah. talk about. Yeah, in this show, this I... Show, like, I, I don't I think... know how I feel. Because I feel like... I feel like Todd played that character, Hikaru, a little too catty, if you know what I mean. Mm -mm. Here's the thing I liked about his character, to be honest, is that he's such a nosy <laughs> little creeper. Like, he knows all the shit going on. That's he's true. He, he's the one who... Yeah, he's like... not afraid to point out, to the point where card. he creates a little, yeah. like, roster. Oh, he creates the charm. Yes. And then he burns he's, it. He's like... What are the odds of this brother going with getting, being able to get her? Okay, and that great. bothered me so much in the last episode. It's like, oh yeah, by the way, now I'm throwing my hat in the ring. When did you show yeah, any fucking interest in this? Yeah, exactly. This and it's, it doesn't even make a difference at the end either because he, she just, you know, kind of throws his statistics right out the window. She goes full it's, asexual and just says, fuck all of you, basically. Well, they're setting, um, they, set it, they set it up for a second season that obviously didn't come and probably will never come. Make your jokes. Oh, my. Um, but, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, like, I thought, I thought Todd in this was, sounded just like Todd, except slightly breathier. Like, even when he was doing the girlier voice, I was like, oh, it's Todd. And then, like, when he did yeah, the guy like, voice, I was it's... like, oh, it's Todd with, like, a half step lower. So I, I thing, wasn't though, really like, too I mean, impressed with him trying to stretch yeah. it. At least it, he made it, it. He made the two sides this, at least fairly distinct. Which at I least appreciate. a little distinct. I can, I can, but my yeah. thing is this: you can't put Todd in a show doing this when you have the goddamn master of doing it as another cast member. Yeah, it, we all know mm -hmm. that. I'm sorry. I know it's hard because it's two different actors. But there's a standard that Josh Greeley set for a kind character of, like yeah. that. Yeah, that's true. And their name yeah. But that was a very different yeah. kind of. That, that was a very different yeah. kind of crossdresser. It's true. It, it wasn't so cliche. But the thing is that there were still two distinct ends of the spectrum and their personality and what they were putting yeah. forward. Yeah. Todd, to me, didn't do that very well. And while I do, and just, I guess, to transition kind of from Todd to Azusa, yes. I really like Josh Greeley as Azusa. I yes. actually think the Me two twins, too. Azusa, Azusa and Micah as Tsubaki, along with who plays Natsume, were probably my three favorite performances in the show. Uh, I like Tsubaki. Uh, I think Micah did Tsubaki well, uh, but... It might not hold up as well if you've watched Survamp and you've gotten to see him be a dick a little bit. I mean, but between um, the... Well, do you want to... Yes. Do you want to talk about Tsubaki or do you want to talk about Azusa? Uh, I feel like we should be comparing them to each other because they're... They're really they're, playing they're off each other the same scene together. Each other, yeah. They do and they, they are twins. Well, I'll let you know that in the Japanese version, because I've seen this like a million times, Tsubaki is my favorite character. Mm. But he's not my favorite dubbed oh, character. That's fair. Ooh, okay. So I like Subaki because he's like that possessive crazy type, and that's <laughs> what I go for because you know, we'll put it on a t shirt. Gigi loves asshole <laughs> characters. Well. Um, 
Thank yeah, you for thanks. Th thank you for yeah for that. Um, but you know, I think that Micah he's a super good little shit lord. You know this, and Subaki <laughs> is a little shit lord. But I almost feel like he's trying too hard to say his lines in a sexy way for me to really like think it's that mm. authentic like i know I, it's an otome game blah 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 whatever i just i feel that he's trying too hard but i feel like because there's another character from another otome ish game where he plays a character that's very similar to subaki and he had a different director for that show i think he did better in that show than he did as subaki and i don't know if it's how seriously Wait, what, what are show are you talking about? Wait, which, which, which one are we talking about which show are you he talking about? He is in Token Rambu. Okay. Of course he's in Token Oh, I haven't he's started that yet. I use that show as my benchmark for I'll things now. Oh, boy. <laughs> for Otome games. But Token Rambu is an not, Otome game. I mean, it is an Otome yeah, game, see, but I, it's I was... not an Otome game. If you're going to compare Tsubaki to Azusa, I had the Shoujo Sai moment during Azusa's little love confession. And I was like, oh yeah. shit, now I'm in love with sexy Josh. What do I do with my life? <laughs> Lilac's gonna kick yeah. my teeth in. Welcome to my you, world. Yeah, because <laughs> Josh is really. Here's your shovel. Keep point, digging. Yes. Yeah, right? At this point, yes. At this point, Josh having a bad. Josh being in a show is just like, yeah, Josh is in this show. There's no qualms here. I mean, yeah, honestly. You can do fucking really everything. Really, the benchmark by which point. I judge both these characters is their scene in episode one that made me want to turn off the show altogether. Do you guys remember which scene that was? Okay. Oh, <laughs> there you oh, go. Oh, the princess yeah, so, scene. The, the oh, this show, <laughs> for you listeners out there, is full of fake-out moments where they try to tease nasty, so uh, perverted fantasies. Episode 6 would like to have a moment with you with fucking Tsubaki's No kidding. So, okay, so in the first episode, <laughs> Tsubaki and Azusa, are uh, we overhear them. We eavesdropping on them, confessing their love for each other. And again, twin brothers confessing their love to each other and then we find out in the end oh oh no 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 we were just acting we're say you we were just practicing our lines and we, we were like you yeah, mother we were practicing the no no you sister fuckers how dare you tease that kind of nonsense on us <laughs> we did not come here for teasing we came here for full-on fantasy fulfilling fujoshi bait you cannot do that to us no we didn't no we didn't what are I you talking about well, Fuck you no. did. Just, oh my god, that scene. That scene, I thought, I, I legitimately thought That's they what were we going to be fucking each other. That was like, so, all right, so their acting in that, though, was... If they'd gone that route in the future where they were actually having a relationship with each other... Uh, yeah, I would have believed, believed it. it was, yeah. They, they, they acted believe. well. They pull off drama well. I, 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 can, I can say this. For both Micah and Josh as these twins. They, they they play off of each other really well. Uh, Micah, I'm not the biggest fan of for this one. Um, he's a bit of a shitlord, not as much as the biggest shitlord, which we'll get to later, but... Um, I agree. Fuck that, <laughs> fuck that character. character. <laughs> but he's, he wasn't, he's often really likable to me. It's, like, he's not one of the likable characters to me, honestly. And I think that's the point of his character, though. Yeah, I mean, at the very least for, for Tsubaki, though... He gets some kind he's of He's not Fujo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's well, not that well, character. But he also at least pause. gets some amount of goddamn about development well, halfway through. Yeah, that's what our point is that it's a 12 Which makes him a little right. bit it's better. It's a 12 Makes him a little it bit does. better. But if there's one thing that I will, I will have to commend Josh for is acting through Azusa's stupid reason why he's <laughs> at the hospital. <laughs> like, I swear to God. God, when they dropped that line on me, I was like, <laughs> Party, party, party. Yes. I want you to guess why Azusa is in the hospital. He ends up in the hospital at some point after collapsing, okay? Same. He held in a fart too long. <laughs> no. Oh, I'm so glad no. you're here, Hardy. You're getting five <laughs> guesses, so that's a no. That's a one. Uh, let's see. You say it's a stupid reason. It's kind of stupid. Yeah, yeah. And everyone who's seen this is just shouting at the screen. I know the reason. <laughs> I honestly have no idea. Okay, do you give up? I give up. He has meningitis. <laughs> he 
Yeah. <laughs> Out of Just. fucking nowhere. This bastard has meningitis. It's never explained where he got it. I don't even know how you get meningitis. I don't even know what meningitis is. <laughs> It's a thin layer it's a brain of disease. around your brain that makes it swell. Yeah, I know. I got that from the from show. No, no, no. Whoa. It's, okay, let me, Whoa. It's, it's, Megan, can I explain? Whoa. Megan, can I explain? Not meningitis. Can I, okay, it's not. I'm not an expert yes. on it, but I do have a relative who does suffer from the same thing where they have chronic migraines because of blood rushing to their head that's similar to meningitis. And it's not something you can contract. It's usually something you're born with. It may be latent for most of your life, and then it'll just uh, develop and get more oh. severe as you get older. Well, why does nobody else have meningitis? There's fucking 12 it's, of them. Watch it, it also can't... has meningitis. <laughs> that's why. I, that well, makes Jimmy, sense. I, I, well, you actually, know, that's a good question. <laughs> there, it, here's, <laughs> here's the, you know, I once came down with something myself to where I wanted to do nothing but build barns and hang out outside all day. Uh, they called it meningitis. <laughs> So, Damn you. on that note, yeah, I would yeah. just like to a, say, <laughs> to, to wrap this up. I had a thing where that, I wanted to go outside Josh, and turn everything into gold all day, and I called it Midas-itis. God damn it. Uh, Get out. You, I wanted to uh, take 300 dude. Spartans and fight a war. They called it Leonidas. <laughs> And this is why Hardy I, is here tonight. And I'm, he on my, the I'm on my fifth much. shot of rum, okay? Yes, G, 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 what do you want to say? Um, to wrap this up, Josh Greeley does a really great J. Michael Tatum impression when he has to be the dad, <laughs> the dad. when Fucho oh, goes right. to high school. Just oh, saying. Oh, that's true. That's true. He, he, yeah, that's, yeah, that's it, true. There's one scene for, yeah. All right. Do we have anything else? Sorry, do you have I anything else to say about twin cest is twin cest or only that it's wrong and sick and perverted and like, we should I never do it and we should all be hanged for even watching the show. I'm gonna I'm gonna say in order. <laughs> I like Todd, Mike is a little shit, and You love Josh. It's Josh and it's me <laughs> talking <laughs> about it. <laughs> I think we know what my right. opinion is. <laughs> Alright. Dig that hole. I will keep digging well, my let's... hole. Let's Thank keep you. digging some holes. I'm sure they're oh thinking about some holes. Oh and move on to our next group of bachelors. Oh, man. Just when you thought the twin cest was over, surprise! The boys actually have a fraternal triplet, our bachelor number seven. He loves cats, makes video games, has his own apartment, and is basically a neat girl's dream come true. <laughs> it's Natsume, voiced by Kyle hey bear. Hebert. Hey bear. Hey bear. Hey bear. Hey hey bear. bear. Is it French? Hey bear. Kyle Hey bear. Okay. Bachelor number eight just turned legal, but don't let his age fool you. He's very in tune with little animals, may have smoked a tad too much weed, and has the best hair in this entire series. It's Louie, played by Jerry Jewell. Best boy. And Bachelor number nine is doing just fine as a basketball player for Meiji University. When he's not shooting balls, he's blushing more than me when I talk about Ian Sinclair. He's Subaru, voiced by David the Matranga. The second time David Matranga. Ooh. Hey, David Matranga blushed No, no. I ruined it. <laughs> no. I was going to say this. Except for he, he wishes that Emma would uh. blow up. Oh, oh my god. Speaking of blowjob noises, I'll wait for that segue for a little bit later. But if you don't know who these lovely actors are, oh, no. Kyle A. Bear, hey, A. Bear, so we're going to go French, is uh, somebody I've never actually heard of, uh, but he's Gohan what? in Dragon Ball Z, oh, Kiba in Naruto, and Kamina in Gurren Lagann. Uh, Jerry wait, Jewel. Wait, 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 wait. Did this bitch just admit yeah, it's okay, it's okay. Remember, this is the was. same woman, yeah, this I have the no same idea woman who, who didn't know who Travis Willingham was. Letter oh, B. Yeah, that's true. Right. True facts. You forget I'm new. I'm like Joey McIntyre, the new kid on the block. <laughs> um, Jerry oh, Jewell McIntyre. plays Victor in Yuri on Ice, Lily in Yay. Sir Vamp, and Ion in Show by Rock, and David Matranga, I also had to look up, um, plays Daichi in Say I Love You, Bertolt, I hope I said that right, I probably didn't, in Attack on Titan. The best boy in Attack on Titan. And... I didn't know this was him at all, um, but I did see this. It's Tamoya and Klanad. That is the, the thing that it's Ugh. the second time Dave Matranga has played a basketball character in an anime. Yeah. All right. So what did we what did we think about these three lovely gentlemen? Let's start uh, with. Uh, I gotta say this. 
Go Natsume. for it. You start. We're... Oh, man. Natsume is the best voice in the okay. whole show. Fight me. Oh, we're going to fight uh... later. But yes. No, I legit loved Natsume. Mostly because I was like, I didn't know Kyle Hager. It's very do unlike. Yeah. Honestly, it is one of the <laughs> it's one of the better performances, yes, of the show. I no, love it is very good. Voice. Uh, like I, I wanted had, Natsume well, he to gets take care of, of me. I had the shoujo side during Natsume too. Well, he gets a bit ya. more development than the other characters does because it's one of the rare times in the show where a character gets like an entire part of the episode to just have Emma to herself. He gets a couple of episodes. He does. He, he, he's a, he makes out. video games. That's going to make the target demographic just go swoon. <laughs> so it, maybe it's a little yep. biased. But yeah, Kyle's performance is unnaturally appropriate for this role. Yeah, it's really good, actually. I, oh, it was so good. What did I, what did I say about Natsume? Um, I, I, really I haven't really heard him before, but I really like him in this role. That is what I said about Natsume. Um, also, the fact that he was smoking a cigarette at the end of the last episode. I don't know why, but that was sexy uh, as hell. I don't I'm know why. You, it's so bad you, for you. I know you're judging me. You're judging me. <laughs> Whatever. We already had the asshole joke. We don't need to continue with that. Um, fun, fun fact, in case you didn't know, Natsume's cats are voiced by Josh Greeley and Micah Salasad. No way! Yeah. I would have found that Wait. hilarious because the cats are named Tsubaki yeah. and Azusa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no yeah, joke! That is awesome! His I have that a weird awesome. feeling he's gonna get like 11 more cats and name them all after his brothers. Because he, he'll never get <laughs> laid! He'll need Please. cats to fill that hole in his life. Oh my god. Trust oh. me, he's got his eyes. Trust me, there's oh. one foot. Whoa! Oh. That deserves a modest slow clap. His, his I'm eyes sorry, are on their prize. Look here. I know that this girl should not be fucking any of her stepbrothers. But if she had to fuck any of her hey, she had an opportunity. I'm gonna fight you I mean, she that. was naked yes, in she his was. apartment. She had a perfect chance to bang that, and she didn't. She didn't. She didn't because no, she, she wanted didn't a family. No, she didn't because this anime adaptation. But I, I seriously thought Kyle... She didn't Kyle... because this anime adaptation is afraid to actually go there. It's true. I'm sure there was a lot more naked nakedness in the game, and I've seen screenshots to prove it. Um, okay. But I thought Kyle was freaking fantastic. Like, seriously. Like, two thumbs up in Z Formation. That's not my favorite. Actually, my personal favorite for the whole cast is going to have to go to Jerry Jules Louie. If we can segue. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Segway. 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 So, yeah. So, segue. Show me. Here's, here's my opinion of Jerry Jules Louie. Louie is best boy because he doesn't want to fuck his sister. Um, that's not entirely. That's not my personal reason for thinking he's the best. Um, I personally. Well, Louie's best boy, but Jerry is really. Well, he has a, a bit of a different kind of role to fill because he's the he's the sensitive one of the group everyone else is like i've got some damage but i can get through it to be a good man for you random woman who just moved into our house and all of a sudden i have a crush on you louis doesn't have that problem he's called a hipster at one point too <laughs> i don't know if I, he's mm -hmm. I, I don't know if i go that far but his well someone someone in yeah, the show th called they had to put a hipster. word there I think um I think it was the shit lord. Probably, probably the shit lord. Probably could have been. Probably. But anyway, yeah, Louis is the best because he and Emma share a similar past and they have a bonding moment over this that mm. makes them both actually yep. develop their characters, which we don't get much of in the show because they cram 14 main characters yeah. into a 12 episode show and you can't do that unless you're Bacano or Durarara. Oh. Though to be fair, Bacano they were Durarara were both also made by the same animation studio, Brainspace. What happened to you, Brainspace? You used to be on the track to be like this great, groundbreaking, revolutionary studio, and then you just went sideways off the track to make these Fujo baiting nonsense shows that nobody wants to watch anymore. Get back and make Spice Wolf season three, damn it. Nah. Never gonna happen. Ah. I love you, Brainspace. I love you, Brainspace. Um I will say this though. I loved I loved Louie because he was wonderful, and of all things, I think I literally had a moment where I was like, show no, you're supposed to be <laughs> shitty. You're supposed to be garbage. How dare you have this well thought out, heartfelt moment about adoption and fears yeah. of being adopted. As somebody who was adopted, I really was like, oh, that's actually really touching. 
However, this show lied to me. Uh -oh. Well, for one moment, it lied to you. Okay. No, it lied to me in general because if you don't know, this hoe has a squirrel. This <laughs> <laughs> hoe got a little rat oh, on yeah. her shoulder. And the only two people in the entire show who can understand the fucking squirrel yes. are the main character who is adopted and Louie who's adopted. Oh. So show. are you saying that because you're adopted, you should be able to talk to tiny fucking squirrels? <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes, I should be able to talk to fucking squirrels! Oh my god. Oh my Look god. here, Snow White with the fab hair can oh fucking no. talk to animals. Why can't I? This you know, that cool. actually, now I think about it. Maybe that's... Maybe. Also, B, Gigi. Yeah. You hate Jerry Jewel. How I hate... You, like, do I hate... Louis? I do well, not, well. First of all, I do not hate Jerry Jewel. I just feel that his casting choices that he has gotten roles for in the past year and a half have been questionable, to say the very best. I don't think so. Um, no, don't... I really like... I really like Jerry Jewel in this role. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jerry Jewel likes playing nice. Like, my only thing is, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's the Jerry Jewel playing the nice, like, really quiet guy again. Because well, he's always that's where he cast. He either gets cast as that guy or he's always accidentally casting him. Well, it's where he belongs, that. honestly. Well, when I was watching this, I was like, this is finally a Jerry Jewel performance that I can get mm -hmm. behind. Like, he's not trying to be overtly sexy like Lily in Servamp. He's not trying to be, you know, I, obviously this was recorded previous to all these all of these anime, um, you know, but he's not, you know, trying to do the Victor and Yuri on Ice. I was like, this is a Jerry Jewel performance that I can truly get behind where he's not being the king of deadpan, which is what he is known for. So I liked him as, as Louis and I don't hate Jerry Jewel. I just casting choices. This is just me. Well, I personally think that Jerry is the best character in the entire show, and I will hear no word to the contrary. I will say, Louis is the best character in the entire show. Mm -hmm. I will agree with that. And I, and I do enjoy Jerry's performance of the quiet the, the quiet the, the quiet, not sensitive guy, but like the really nice guy who wants to actually be a legit older brother and be protective over Emma. Mm-hmm. Like, I really like that. In a show where it's a bunch of brothers trying to fuck their stepsister, I really like that there's this one, at least one character that's like, nah, man, I'm gonna protect you. The Coalition to Protect Chi. The Coalition to Protect Chi. <laughs> coalition to Protect yes. Chi. I just love how he's like, your hair is awful. Let me fix that. <laughs> that's great. He was real. I like Jerry in this too because he was also there was something really soothing about the. Voice. Actually, yes, I can agree with that. There was something very. That's the other thing about Natsume that I like. Like both him and Louie had the most soothing voice. Actually, yeah. there's a. All right. Let's well, before we on. shed any more can, tears, can we talk let's about, talk the about car? Can we talk about the car? Let's talk about the car. <laughs> let's talk about the car who has the best line in the entire series. I will get to that in a second, but oh, before. No. I fucking flip my shit. Line, then. Um, yeah, I think that Subaru, that David is like the straightest straight man ever. And yeah. what did I say? I did also let out a shoujo sigh for his love confession. And yeah, his was he's kind of super sweet. cute when he's embarrassed. Yeah. The one note but I wrote a little stiff. The one wrote I note I wrote about um uh Matranga here. This is word for word. Matranga isn't too shabby as the car. <laughs> because <laughs> here's the funny shit here's the funny thing we have Subaru here for Brothers Conflict and we have Josh Greeley in this show and if you can't recall when we talk Diabolic Lovers Josh Greeley voiced Subaru <laughs> it would have been the funniest shit who is not a car was, yeah who is not a car it would have been the funniest shit if Josh was instead Subaru <laughs> instead of us or something <laughs> That would have been the oh my funniest God. shit. That would have been actually, like, the the fucking funniest thing that could have happened. You know what's also the funniest thing? The funniest... No, no, the funniest thing that happened with uh, with Dave's role is that the budget just dried up during those basketball scenes, and they actually resorted to slideshow oh yeah. images <laughs> to get across the stupid basketball game that had zero dollars for the budget. Yup. 
Production IG. <laughs> no kidding. Not. Oh my god. <laughs> like I was like, oh my god. They like okay. The animation is already lax enough as it is. There's plenty of hold Pretty the frame and just voice. move the mouth moments. But during that scene there, like they don't even pan across the frame or zoom or frame um, anything. They just hold the image. It's not they, handshakers. It's bad, not. Oh, I would take handshakers over a million terrible slideshow basketball scenes any day. <laughs> Well, it's not their fault. It's you not obviously the haven't guests. watched Handshakers. I yet. have, uh, and I'm going to continue to watch oh, it until the that's budget for the runs Halloween out. episode. Oh, <laughs> um, um, it's All not. I it's know not. Is that, like... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, it's not the English dub's fault that it has terrible animation. Um, but for somebody who's not very familiar with David Matranga, um, he certainly had some of the best lines in the show. And please. Say your, say your piece, and I will close it out by saying the best line in the entire series once Gigi. you are finished. Gigi, yes. you say you're not familiar with yes. Martanga. You remember Uncle Dictor? Oh, oh, that was him? That was him. Oh, shit. Maybe I should Dave, brush off on Dave my... David Matronga will forever haunt no I, yeah. <laughs> That OVA was something special, but my <laughs> God. Oh, wait, right right is this the blowjob oh, noise? Shit. <laughs> yeah, he's one of the uh, guys in Dramatical Murder. He's a uh, Kojak the Lojack, aka the one who bites Alvin's dick in the OVA while blowing I, him. I finally <laughs> bought that series so I can actually watch it. Oh, now. God. oh no! Oh, just... good God! Prepare for one of the worst things you. I just ever realized heard. now. Megan's dragged me um, into three. Well, not directly, but Megan's and I have been in three terrible Fujo bait shows in a row. Now we've been in Dramatical Murder. We've been yep. in First Love Monster. And now we've completed the Holy Trinity by finishing off with Brothers Conflict. At least you didn't do Diabolic Lovers. I feel like we have actually gone through Otome game anime hell. <laughs> no, um, no, but no, I think no. This, we have not gone that... through Otome anime Don't hell. Amnesia. Until we okay, we have amnesia. not done Amnesia. We forgot oh, about God. Amnesia. I just learned, Gigi just no, told me they dubbed that. Years. And I was like, why? Why they would they dub it? I don't want to watch it ever. Someone... Sentai Filmworks needed some money. Well, then don't dub it. <laughs> Sentai Filmworks owed some I mean, they did. <laughs> I guess so. I mean, they didn't dub Humanity Has to Climb. Somebody at Sentai this? needed. Somebody at Sentai needed to cover their guys. <laughs> I, I, I think. <laughs> okay. A, I think it's. A, excuse me. I think it's a general consensus. God, who do we have right now? I I thought Subaru was all like I thought he was cute and I thought he was adorable. I was like, oh hey, it's. It's it's inferior bear hole with basketball, yeah. but <laughs> it, it's relatable. It's probably the most oh re my God. realistically well, relatable of the of the thirteen brothers' problems. So I'll, I'll, yeah. I will say this though, he does not have the best line in the show. Another character does, but we all I forgot to mention this one for Todd. Todd also has one of the best lines. I'm freezing. That's me. right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Can I can I just I forgot about that one. Just say this, can I just say this about Subaru though? I'm very happy with the fact that towards the end of the show, he's like, "Nah, I'm gonna wait for her until I yeah. become a better man for her." Well, that's like all of them. And then I'm gonna lose out to Natsume. <laughs> no, he's oh, gonna lose out to Watari. Fuck you! He's either all gonna lose Azusa. <laughs> fuck you, Azusa bitches. <laughs> They're all going to lose to somebody we're going to talk about next. But before we get to the next group of bachelors, I will reiterate for you, and this is quoting the best line in the entire show. This is in the Valentine's Day OVA, which oh, is the reason no. why you should buy this box oh. set. Oh, no. don't, don't, don't buy the box set. This is my basketball of chocolate love, and I'm going to shoot it on your face. <laughs> <laughs> And with that, and with that. that, the writing cast officially gave up. <laughs> and with that, Let's the writer had too much vodka. <laughs> Let's, Let's and move then we on. And drinking tequila. <laughs> considering who won the writer. Two tequila, three tequila, four. Oh, considering who one of the writers oh. is and the director for the OVA specifically, dear lord. Mm. Let's One tequila, two tequila, three tequila, four. <laughs> Let's Can move on up. to okay, our next on group of bachelors. Oh. We're almost through. We only have two more groups of guys. Two oh, more God. groups Thank of guys. God. This Thank is God. Like, like, and at last I yeah. see the light. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Listen, don't ruin Rapunzel for me. Oh, All right. So. No, I'm ruining Frozen. Right I now. know. Ten. Bachelor number 10 <laughs> yeah. is. 
You can do wise it. beyond his years. At a fresh face, 18 years old, he is the princely type and takes care of the family's garden, which is probably around like 64 acres because that's about all he has to do in this series. He also wants to trim his sister's garden, if you know oh. what I'm saying. Hey this silver-haired fox is Iori, voiced by Eric Vale. And bachelor number 11 is the same age as Emma, and he's our token Sundere. He's kind of <laughs> dumb, but he's smart enough to know that he liked this girl far before she became his sister, and now he's going through an internal conflict that would stump even Freud. Welcome Yusuke, voiced by Matthew Mercer. AKA, I can't believe this is the reason why we get to talk about <laughs> Matthew Mercer on AKA the show. This is the second, the second time I've time. talked about Matt Mercer. AKA Steph Dunn goofed and originally thought that Yusuke was Austin Tindall. <laughs> <laughs> Austin Tindall? <laughs> no. So I, started, Karma. I started watching the show and I was like, hey, that kind of sounds like Austin Tindall. I checked the cast list. Shit, it's, it's Matt Mercer. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? No. <laughs> what is this world coming to? Matt Mercer, when he's. Matt Mercer when he's not playing D&D. <laughs> when he's not playing Right. D &D. Oh, yeah. Matt Mercer's so hot, though. Austin's smart um, enough to so, stay away from this show. Anyway. Um, Eric Vale, you may have also heard him as Ferret and Serve of the End. Did I get this one right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Kanade in First Love Monster and Keiichi in B Got a HK and Matthew Mercer, who is a member of my reverse harem I don't get to talk about a lot. Um, he is Levi in Attack on Titan, which I just found out the other day. He's yes. Leorio in Hunter, Hunter 2011. And he's also going to be Jotaro in Jodo's Bizarre Adventure Stardust Crusaders. So what do we have to say about the boy who says nothing and Gigi's best boy? I can't believe Eric Bale got casted as that. That's like making Todd Habercorn Friday in Empire of Oh, wow. <laughs> 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 All he does is screech like a pterodactyl for two hours. All Iori does is like, here, I gave you a flower. Did I mention I'm internally suicidal today? <laughs> oh my god. I didn't even remember. Okay, I thought his name was Itona. That's how much I remember. Here's the it. thing. So Eric, happy paycheck, yeah, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Remember how Not I said that there was lot. some... That, I remember how I said there was some forgettable performances. As much as I like Eric Vale's performance of Inori... This was one of the forgettable ones for me. I forgot he was a character until he decided to leave at the in like episode yeah. twelve. He's not <laughs> in it a whole lot. Is the problem? It's not that we forgot no, him. It's that he's... he just wasn't there to be remembered. I mean, Eric he Vail says about Eric fifteen Vail words fit, in the entire good... series. But say, Eric Vale was a good fit, but it's kind of forgettable at the same time, unfortunately. Yeah, can I bring up at this point here that if you've been if you're playing the home game with your scorecards at home, we've mentioned basically all the best male voice actors that Funimation has ever created. All and, and members. Members. <laughs> mm -hmm. so basically they they got all the good ones and they didn't take a chance on like newbie actors for this show because they want top tier performances, which is a shame because these guys for brothers these guys conflict. could be doing so much better than brothers conflict. But yeah. I applaud them for doing a good job anyway. Listen. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna talk more about this at the end of the episode because Gigi got some words. Gigi um, has um, words. But the only the only thing I have to say about Eric Vale was for some reason his voice is super cute. It, That's it all is. I wrote down for him. It's 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 one it's more it's of the quiet. But there's no reason for him to be in the show. Like that's not a knock against Eric. That's a knock against the show, which is. If, and even then, you could have put him as a different character, maybe. Yeah, it's Honestly, pretty he showed up, he got a paycheck, he went home. I Honestly, guess. Eric is... This is one of, of course, like, the more quieter roles you see Eric Vale do. I think it basically plays three different kinds of characters. He, You usually see him as, like, the quiet character, like, in this case, Inori, uh, Yugi from Fruits Basket, mm -hmm. uh, Shinoff from Yona. Kasher. Yep. Kasher. Yep. Uh, then you also have the ever-wonderful dickbags. Like, uh, <laughs> fuck. Desert uh, Punk? Ni like, the police are demanding yep, like, uh, Nishiki from Tokyo Ghoul, who's a pain in the ass. And then you also have him playing the lover boy kind of character, which in this case would be Sanji from One Piece, <laughs> Loki, Loki oh. from Fairy Tale. If we want to talk about, you're a fairy tale right now. And in that or same group, like that. and it's same, and it's the And lead. then there's Farid. <laughs> and then there's Farid. There's Farid. Ooh, Miko. Fucking hell. <laughs> Now, my stomach hurts, I was gonna say so in the lover boy role. Oh, Mika boy, <laughs> come here! I've got your friend Akane's head in a jar. <laughs> We're going to go in a 
car. We're going to go on a field trip with all the other children. <laughs> Did I mention that Crowley can drive a bus? Oh I missed that episode of Pokemon. Oh my god. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Alright, oh, so oh, boy, I have your lawyer I'm favorite. done. I'm done. Can so, we talk about so Matt Eric, Mercer now? Yes, yes so can we talk Matt. about yeah, Matt Mercer? The Be- that, what the fuck, what the Matt, fuck Matt Mercer? Okay. You put Matt okay. Mercer into any show and he'll be really yes, good. Honestly. Like, what the fuck, Matt? You're using your powers for Honestly, no. I attribute that to the director, the, who we'll get to later. The director oh kept God. these boys in line very well. And deserve. Oh my god. Like, you could put Matt Mercer into a show where there are talking penguins with a giant <laughs> dick in Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I forgot he was he one of the leads for that show. As if he was doing Shakespeare for the goddamn queen. <laughs> I don't know, Matt, I don't know what you're doing inside your brain. I don't know if there's an army of, like, little tiny mini Matt Mercers that have learned to control your powers for evil. But damn, were you good yes. at this show. <sighs> where this show didn't deserve a performance like you. Yes, it did. This show does not deserve the amount of good performances it yes, has. Yes, it does. Well, what shut your whore mouth. It's, that, that's what I'm saying with the... <laughs> I need to poop again. The <laughs> writing for this. They, they, they played it straight. They said, oh man, this is the most contrived shit I have ever seen written in Japanese, but by God, I am going to put all my effort into this, and I am going to swoon every fangirl who comes across this. Dignity be damned. It, they didn't give a it damn. It fucking worked, because Yusuke is my favorite character. He's my best boy. Well, he gets the I most... I thought he was... He probably gets the most attention. He's the most believable. He's the most yeah. believable. I believed that... every word yeah. Matt Mercer put in his flaps. <laughs> and I just wanted to date him. Flaps. I'm sure I'd like to Minus see the flaps. one. Minus the one. Minus oh. yo, what it do. What it do. What it do. What it do. <laughs> I swear, it was like a honey pop moment. Where he's like, what it do. <laughs> oh no, no, but yeah, Matt Mercer, like, the character of Yusuke itself is actually has an interesting, like, conflict in him where it's like, I liked this girl, and now he, now she's my sister. The fuck am I gonna do? I'll that, tell you that, exactly. Right? If that, that happened to me. That kind of conflict is interesting. And despite the show being written as a piece of shit, <laughs> Matt Mercer does really well as Yusuke. I, and again, yeah. I thought this was Tyndall at first, because I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> That's how often I hear Matt Mercer and shit right now. That's how often I hear him. We, we should specify. We should probably specify that when you say that it's shit, it's not that the writing or the dialogue is itself like low quality. It's that the show is shit. It the ha- show itself is shit. <laughs> no, it doesn't progress. Is the problem? It's that it has to stay at the same status quo where we're all in this sort of teehee. I kind of have a crush on you, but we can't really advance beyond that level, which is infuriating because it means that everything that happens will be for nothing. Well, that's because it is a reverse harem anime based on an Otome game. Which I can count maybe one in all total of all of them I watch. And I've watched a lot of this because this is my jam. (laughs) Where the girl has actually picked a boy at the end. They will all end this way. There will be no no conclusion whatsoever. And five seasons of Udino Prince Sama later, (laughs) you know, she still is not dating anyone. Fucking Haruka with her goddamn yellow eyes who has a personality of a plastic bag. Well, well, when we get to Emma, that, that, that ending... That typical ending you brought is actually interesting when applied here. Yeah, but it, but yes. it, even in, yes. in that case, there Matt Mercer's character who gets all of the best, who gets most of the focus actually, done did good. Yeah, uh, love him. Love love them. love him. Yeah. I could talk about my best boy all day. It is time to move on, ladies and gentlemen, to our last two bachelors of the night. Oh boy! All right, night bachelor ever. number twelve. <sighs> Bachelor number 12 is someone that everyone either loves or loves to hate. At 15 years old, he has made a name for himself by becoming an idol, but all those lights can't illuminate the fact that he's a little devil when he's at home, especially when it's concerning his sister. It's Futo, voiced by Vic Mignogna. Uh, Fuck this character. I want to punt him into the sun. I want to kill him. And, I just want to rip those stupid hair clips out of our, his hair. You do not take two hair clips and stick them to the side of your head like that. That is not how hair works. Shave it off, goddammit. That is not- you're, You are you're, not the you're lead lar- girl. 
They're used no, on hair clips. No, Shut your whore mouth. No, I've seen no, no, the use of hair no, clips that badly since that one chick from Noah, Love Noah, Chinobu are, and Other Noah, Delusions. Noah, Noah, I also want to tear Noah, 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 do you seriously have a problem with his hair clips compared to his actual fucking character right now? Yes. Yes, I oh do. Oh my god. What that is the a fuck? character Can we talk about well, the before, last ride. That is a Before the, the salt train gets thrown off the tracks, there's one more boy I have to talk about. Oh boy. Our last bachelor, unlucky number 13, is the youngest of them all. At 10 years old, he loves video games, picnics, and of course, his brand new big sis. Welcome, Wataru, played by Bryce Happenbrook. What did we do to deserve this show? Oh my god. <laughs> Baby Bryce. I don't Baby know. Baby Bryce. Um, picnic. He's picnic. Such a going family. on a picnic. He's such yes, a yes, family. everyone. Hey, you heard that right. You heard that right. Aaron himself from Attack on Titan is playing a fifth grader in this goddamn show. And he sounds such a bad picnic. Thing. picnic. Like a fifth grader. All right. Anyways. <laughs> well, since you mentioned Bryce Pappenbook has played Aaron in Attack on Titan. Caesar in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Battle Tendency, yes. Staz in Blood Lab, Yay! and also Kirito in Sword Out Online. Mm -hmm. and, uh, wow, we didn't fuck even you guys that like that. Sword Out Online. <laughs> and Vic Mignana has played Edward in Full Metal Alchemist and Brotherhood. Rin or Reen in a Free Eternal Summer. <laughs> and in a nice shout out to an episode in this series, he also plays Zero in Vampire Night. So I'm just going to shout out. And he was also in Sword Art Online, too. As a tiny bit character. No, we're not going there. <laughs> um, we're not going there. Instead, I'm going to let everybody else talk about how much they hated Futo. So yes. it, guys. Oh, my God. Fuck that character. Fuck this guy. Fuck this guy. Fuck that Fuck vampire. No, no. Here's the thing. Fuck this character, but... Vic plays it very well. <laughs> <laughs> That's why oh we say fuck because. God. Okay, yeah. So for all you people, Vic made who, me hate him, and it was great. <laughs> okay, regardless of what you think about Vic Mignogna as a person or as an actor, Futo is the character is a two faced son of a bitch because he plays nice, cool guy as an idol, but when you get him all alone, he is. Uh, Edward Elric, no, not, I'm sorry, no, Edward from Twilight level, creep up on you, bite you on the neck, you are mine, kind of creeper character that nobody likes. And he says this because there's a um, school festival episode where Futo dresses as a vampire, mind you. And gets so, way haha, too joke. creepy. I, I effing hate this character. This fucking character. I, I fucking hate this, this character. This character should die in a fire. And the voice makes me hate him. More. Yeah. Like, here's the thing. And and that's the thing, is Vic does a really good job in yes. this show. Because he's a little douchebag. I'd say, uh, and he plays the little douchebag very yes. well. However, I really fucking hate Futo, and I want him to die. Which Honest, was question? Honestly, I think this is actually one of the more one of the better performances because Vic made me hate Futo. Mm. Yeah. Honestly. It was so well, good that I want to punch this kid into the fucking sun. He's definitely sun. more memorable than some of the other roles. Yes. Yes. Not Maybe not in the best way, but he is memorable. On the complete opposite of the spectrum. Memorable. So again, it raises the question. Of all you three and a half girls in the listening audience here, does anyone find this kind of bad boy appealing? Fuck no. I did. Okay. I love Fudo. Fuck you guys. Okay. I love him. I know you is, love Fudo, but... If it's not appealing, then why keep it in the show? Like, it's the same question I have with... Okay, if you play... Because there is a... There is a... It's like the people who... It's like the girls who like right, JJ. Right, I get that. Like, yeah, me. Yeah, yes, yeah. people like JJ. You have, you have your other GGs in the world, Noah. There okay. is a, there are a group of girls, there are there, women who like this kind of character. The, okay, that's fair enough. Let it me is explain true. this to you. Let me explain this to you on the flip I, side. I know example you're gonna use. I, I'm pretty sure I know who you're gonna use. Are you gonna bring? You're gonna Audrey. bring. I was gonna mention Audrey from Honey Pop. Is that she's a bitch, yeah. but for some reason there is an audience who finds that appealing. I do. I personally don't. I know you don't because we're sane human beings who will live on past our what the 30s. Gigi, <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Now, now Gigi's allowed to, though. Well, She's allowed one guilty pleasure. But only I, all one. All my pleasures are apparently guilt. Oh, fuck, I have to choose? Well, okay. <laughs> let, me, let me talk about Fudo for a second. And why I like him, and I'm pretty sure not as, not as a 15-year-old, but I have dated him. 
Um, oh, he is no. your classic douchebag. Um, and he, what the fuck did I say? He's a smarmy motherfucker. And somebody yeah. calls him a jerk face, and that's what I used to call my ex-boyfriend behind his back. So, um, I, I, I can dig Fudo. I think he's a weird douchebag, possessive motherfucker. And I'd be on the Fudo train. I just, choo -choo, uh, motherfuckers. I just wrote in my notes that Vic is a little shit. Dot, dot, dot. That's it. He is a little shit. <laughs> he is a little and I really, shit. I really liked him. He plays little shits he's, very he, he well. He's good. like... <laughs> That's true. It's a very convincing performance, again, because Vic made me hate this character. It was that convincing of a performance. Like, I almost yeah. wonder... Speaking of little shit lords, I wonder if him and Micah would have switched roles. Like, if the impact would have been as big. I don't think so, honestly. Uh -uh. No, Vic's got a... Yeah, Vic's got a talent for making even the most despicable characters at least fun to watch. And that's what I got out of Futo, because even though I didn't like him for who he was or the kind of actions he did, I still didn't dislike the performance when it was on yeah. screen. No. Yeah. Again, we're not bashing Vic. We love the performance. We just fucking hate this character. <laughs> and I Mine want to rip those hair clips Except for me, who has probably character. dated him six times. Well, I... So... <laughs> Uh, but would you marry him? We That's all... the question. Is he someone? No, you can never. Him? But oh, is he the kind of guy you can change? Is he a project to make into a better person? No. Oh, okay. No. <coughs> He's just good for about twenty-five minutes, and then I'm done. Oh. But what do you do with the other twenty-four <laughs> minutes and thirty <laughs> seconds? <laughs> Think about Matt Mercer. <laughs> <laughs> what did I miss? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what did I mean? The best joke of the night, bar oh, yeah. none. <laughs> because I was, was I gone for four minutes and 30 seconds? Oh, Motherfuckers, I was going. <laughs> We're all going to have to go to confession after this. I will see you guys on Sunday morning. Oh my god. Y'all want to joke because I can't do it. Y'all motherfuckers need Jesus. Okay, so speaking of characters who we all hate. Somebody explain the joke. Speaking of needing Jesus, we need to move on to the boiler. Oh my god, ah. Oh my god, why, Caitlin? Why? <laughs> right. Why? Why, why are you saying Caitlin? Why Caitlin? I don't know why I said Caitlin. Oh my god, how much have you had to drink? Chan, why? What okay. is this? So yeah, for everyone who hasn't watched this, and that's okay, the oh. role of Wataru is a you know small kid who's oh. we we assumed like I think from the character designs we kind of assumed that they'd get a girl to play him like uh, they did with um, Honey from Oran or something like that. No, Whoa. no, no. They took past puberty no. actor character, told them to pitch it up like this and talk all cutesy like, and I want to go get some fried chicken and. Totally tubular, and I belong in a Yu-Gi-Oh show or some. Wataru like is a precious cinnamon roll. You back the fuck You're off. Too good for this. Earth. Back off. But I. He is like Baby Naegi from Danganronpa. That is all I got. That is and then I wrote picnic, it. picnic. We're going on a picnic. <laughs> That's basically it. No, uh -oh. no. You want to know what I wrote? And I'm not gonna say this 100 percent because I apologize for this. So Babby Bryce is precious, and I want to protect him. On a scale of one to Mikhail from Gangsta, it's probably a five. <laughs> with ten being bad. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm surprised I'm people still remember that the show. Baby Bryce. I'm sorry to the person who played Mikhail in Gangsta. You know who you are, because I know you listen to this shit. I know you listen to this shit. Wait, I'm sorry. It, I'm wait, sorry. wait a name drop. Wait a name drop. I didn't name drop I'll anything. name drop Baby Bryce and say I didn't like it at all. I'm sorry, Baby Bryce. You know I love you in almost everything else you do, but this was not good. The question is, would any of us liked this? Now Bryce, Bryce Pappenbook's gonna tweet me <laughs> and be like, oh, you Damn bitch. <laughs> now, this was a casting. Now, here's the thing is that it's a casting choice to give the character this voice. Would we have liked this better if they had cast a girl to voice a young boy? Yes. You would have. Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I, now I kind of disagree. I kind of like Bryce. Honestly, honestly, that or just not this person. Just not Bryce. It doesn't. Am I the, and well, I like Bryce. Am I, I the only really one who is actually moderately okay with this? I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. I'm not, no, I'm not okay with it. But when I first heard him open his mouth in episode one, 
Nope. You can't take it seriously as a problem. It takes you out of the experience. Yeah. And I, they probably realized that, and that's why they did. I, if they realized that, if the casting people had realized, hmm, this doesn't really sound like a fifth grader, or hmm, the dub talk cast is probably not going to like this, then you know, honestly, yeah. <laughs> we weren't the target audience, I guess. I was the target audience. You were the target audience. Yeah, you bought the show. It was already. The right. limited edition box I did. set. In the shiny art I box. I did. I did. Oh, boy. And it was okay. It, Baby Bryce. Picnic, picnic. We're going on a picnic. The, <laughs> All right. The only justification. So... There's one justification for this. I don't think that anyone watching this, and maybe people who play the Otome game as well, would consider Wataru to be a viable dating character. But yet he, he is. is. He like, has a route in the game. We, do, we already do not take him seriously, though, from the show. We don't take him seriously as someone who you can date. So it's okay to give him a voice that also is not dateable. Can I just... There is a I screen cap like, from the game the thing, though, where the Wataru Japanese? is kissing Emma on the goddamn mouth. Ugh. As a can, can I just say, though, in the show, the little, little, the little tickets he gives to Emma... And the 100 smooches, the 100, 1,000 smooches thing. I lost my shit. I'm like, oh, fuck, no. That was cute. It was cute. That was cute. It was cute as, like, a little brother kind of thing. Yes. But when you remember what kind of show this- But he's also 10 and he's not five. Let's say, when you remember what kind of show this is at the same time, though, no. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. Yeah. It, the, yeah. The, we do not need a repeat of First Love Monster. Oh, Lord. No, no. Okay. Um, but you... here's something else that I have to say, though. In the English, they give him a super, a, a big name voice. Guys, it's not like they didn't do it in the Japanese, too. Do you know who plays Wataru in the Japanese? Oh, fuck, I'm no. looking at it right now. It's Yuki <laughs> Kaji. <laughs> they got a lot of big name Seiyu they for the did. Japanese. Eventually. Let's talk about the last two characters we're going to talk about. Yes. We're going to talk about... Um, Best girl, because she's the only girl, God. Emma, <laughs> and her her little squirrel friend. So, we can't forget our female protagonist, who has a name, but it is not said once during this entire series. Aside from, loves, aside from a nickname. Her real name aside is from said. a nickname yeah. she. Aside from a nickname. She loves cooking and having a family, but she'll still let her brothers make out with her anyway. It's Emma, played by Colleen Clinkenbeard. Oh, dear sweet lord. Bitch is fucked. Oh. And along along with our MC, of course, she has to have a little companion who serves as a narrator. Our favorite possessive mm. squirrel who will claw <laughs> his way up to protect his master, even if he has to pull an Udapri and turn into a human to do so. It's Julie, voiced by Sunny Straight. Because, of course, the funny sidekick character has to be voiced by Sunny Straight. Because why the fuck? Sunny Straight was the only reason I stayed safe yes. through a majority. Yes. <laughs> it's... it's and he, he only it. exists, like, from a functional level, Julie only exists to explain who the characters, who the brothers are, because he has, like, this clunky exposition in the first episode, like, oh, you must be the third brother who is also a monk character. And no, oh, that's you... not the only reason Julie is there, but before we get into, no, before, before we get into are. that, Gigi, Gigi, what are these two people? Yes. Before. before we explain what Julie explains, I will explain that Sunny Street has also played Koro. Koro I almost said Koro. <laughs> God damn it, Megan! From the imaginary Koroko's basketball dub, it's Sunny Street. Yes, he plays Koro. Kuro it's Koroko Sensei's assassination. <laughs> oh, you got fuck y'all. He plays. I thought we were friends. <laughs> He plays Koro Sensei in Assassination Classroom. He plays Maze Hughes in Full Metal Alchemist. Oh, and he also boy. plays Lupin the Third in Fujiko Mine. Um, and who? Colleen. Colleen Klingenbeard is also known as Riza Hawkeye from Full Metal Alchemist, Ur Urza Scarlet from Fairy Tale, Mocha from Rosario plus Vampire, and my new favorite role for Colleen, Minako from Yuri on Ice. Uh, and and we, so, we gotta mention her most maybe one of her most famous roles. I'm going to be king of the reverse harem. <laughs> oh, I forgot. That was her. Oh, nope. yes. Luke, she was going to be Luffy. king of the whole yes. club. King of the whole oh, club. Luffy. Oh, Luffy. Luffy from One Piece. Yeah. Oh, so anyway. So, obviously, this is I a actually, very... Like, I was like, damn, this is actually really good, Colleen. I liked it a lot. 
It, it's a very different like, role for Colleen Clinkenbeard, considering is. she's king of the fucking pirates and shit. Well, she, she has, yeah, she has two main roles. I know, t- no, two voices, which is she's got the Luffy voice, which is a uh, high energy. She also brought that to, I think she was, uh, yeah, the character she played in Yuri on Ice. Or she's got the low, sultry, uh, XXX holic kind of voice that is like liquid chocolate in a glass. Here's the thing. I think, like, I didn't put two and two together before. It sounds, Megan, it sounds kind of similar to, um, uh, Chisa from Dragon Rumpa 3, don't you think? Mm. Kind of similar to that. Um, if, and it, it, it honestly works. It, like it honestly too. works here. Like, for a, for a like, character that is flat as a piece of cardboard. <laughs> She actually, in more actually than one gives the... her some yes. personality. Mm, that's, that's what you're plus. talking about. But you're stretching it. It's not much of a personality, but, but it's, it's so, a slut. But the winner, yourself. I have to say the winner of the performances is Sunny Straight for Julie. Mm. Sunny Straight, the only reason I because, stay insane. Because he is basically us watching this show and <laughs> is commenting on it like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> And that's the best <laughs> part of this fucking show is What are you Julie. doing? Why are you why are you not freaking out that we're all like, the fuck? you're gonna get like And he also that. agrees with us that Louie is the best boy because Louie doesn't want to fuck you, Emma at all. That's true. Because Louis is the one brother that Julie is okay with. That's it. I, I I'd Everyone imagine Everyone else is a target. My my thoughts on Julie was he's a little shit. I I fucking hate that goddamn squirrel. I, I'm gonna but agree with you. I didn't like <laughs> his him. voice was his voice was good. Mm. I mean, Sonny did a good job at playing a little shitty squirrel. That in the commentary, apparently, he tried to say that he wanted to sound like a Brooklyn Bugs Bunny. So Are once you he said serious? that, I once I, he said that, I couldn't get it out of my I, head. The Bugs Bunny oh was already Sonny. based on a Brooklyn accent. But, oh, okay. That I know that would explain it. No, um, the, the only, I only have a base comparison for what the Japanese sounded like because you hear one line in the ending song in the Japanese and it's... Or one or two songs, yeah. Yeah, you know, when he says like, uh, 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 liar. That's who it was. Like, but it's not really similar in the English. I, I didn't really like Sonny's portrayal of him in the English because it's so unpleasant to listen to. If, if I had... It is. Yeah. It is. It, no, I it was. I liked it, but it was really weird. It, I think. Yeah. It, I liked it. it was weird I, at times. I think but it's I, personally, made I liked to be it. annoying. <laughs> it was one of my favorites because, again, Julie is basic common sense. <laughs> I, I don't even know what that. Julie is. I don't even know that. I liked Colleen a lot, and I liked um. <laughs> I liked Sunny. Yeah, I, I like these two. Colleen manages to give Emma some kind of personality, despite it, it, the character being like flattest cardboard and then yes. personally i do like sunny because he's the common sense in this whole scenario and he's basically me like dear sweet <laughs> jesus what well, is going on in this he, shit what are you I doing i question that i question whether or not he actually is the self-insert insert because like gg do you know what he Ju- was the self-insert Julie's, to me <laughs> do you know what julie's sur- purpose is in the game He's the narrator. Okay. Every Otome game has a shitty narrator. Okay, because it, like Amnesia has that little fairy guy. Right. He's the narrator. Yeah. Okay, so in that sense, there Julie should be impartial to the activities going on. Who's the narrator in Diabolic Lovers? I don't know. I've Is never played one? Diabolic Lovers. And you should never. Do I would no. I don't watch ter- terrible shows. <laughs> Bullshit. You've, you've watched, watched the Apocalypse Zero. Zero. The studio One episode. Audience. I watched one episode. I'm like, yeah. Man. I will make you watch the rest of that. Bullshit. You if I had to ball. watch right, goddamn well, Dime of- Dollar, you are going to watch the rest of Handshakers. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Well, speaking of Colleen. You watch Master Keaton. Whose performance I thought was unusually flighty and kind of innocent, but that's what her character called for. Colleen is also the ADR director for most of the series. Um, however, once the OVAs come around, our favorite person, Clifford Chapin, Yay. directed the OVAs. What up, Cliff? So he directed the OVAs, and the head writer was John Bergmeier. And then there were three script writers, but the main one is my senpai, Jamie Markey. So if you have not heard of these, 
directors and or script writers. Well, I only wrote down Colleen's stuff. Sorry, Cliff. Um, <laughs> Colleen has also directed Steins Gate, uh, My Hero Academia, and Baca and Test. And Jamie Markey has written for Orange, Panty and Stocking, and High School DxD, my favorite uh, actual fan service harem show that there's that's out there so let, let me help now, let me help you on the other ends here so clifford Chapin yes, in terms of directing do. um he's this is actually not the first time really that he's worked on a colleen directed show he's also directed yard of the dawn and rolling girls um but on his own he's also directed Kaja, uh planetarian uh and speaking of penguin dicks he's the director for dime a dollar uh, and additionally, <laughs> additionally, there are actually two more writers alongside Jamie, though Jamie is probably the main one here. Um, there's a there's one named Rice Coolidge, who this is the only credit that they have, and the third writer is actually Samuel Woolley, who Woolley. whom uh, I think we've talked about a couple times occasionally, but as ANN is loading, I know he is the writer for Show Me and Sample. <laughs> Uh, he's also oh, wow. written the scripts for All Out, Bikini Warriors. He's done script for Dragon R Academy, Free Eternal Summer, Freezing Vibration, a uh, variety of things. Uh, Pandora and the Crimson Shell, Noreen, uh, World Break. So he's written a variety of scripts as well. So there are two additional script writers, but Jamie is probably the main one in this case. Can we just give uh, Lilac a round of applause for pronouncing Clifford's last name right? <laughs> for once <laughs> in my life! <laughs> I could go back to Clifford Chapin, but I think I think, I think well, actually, I would get called out. Cliff. No, I would not get called out by Hardy. I would get called out by Clifford himself. <laughs> Probably. As Please as we name drop Cliff. more voice actors, I need, who I need to send Clifford to a fedora so that every time you mispronounce his name, <laughs> he can put it Fuck, on. Just come well, actually. <laughs> well, actually. Uh, you're gonna make me start a new hole, and for a completely different reason. <laughs> Here's your shovel. <laughs> My God. Out, well, oh, despite it. It despite out. the name oh, drama we're having oh, right oh. now, what did you guys think about the directing and writing drama of this show? This show has a dub yes. way better than it deserves. Mm -hmm. Like we said the before, writing <laughs> is the writing is kind of questionable, but there, but, there, it works. but it works, and it actually made <laughs> helped me get through the show. I think one of my favorite lines was actually in like the first or second episode, and it's when Julie says, "Stop the car," as in stop the conversation, not the literal "stop the car." <laughs> and I'm like, "Dear fucking lord, what am I listening to?" My favorite line in the show. I don't know if you wrote this, and if you did, please come out and say it. It goes to Matt Mercer's character, <laughs> and it is the moment that oh, made me laugh so about. hard. That I vomited. How, how many? How many degrees? Uh, how many shades of better is the school gonna be? That's no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't that. Oh, that no. wasn't the fifty shades. Because they threw in a fifty. They... No, it wasn't the fifty shades line. It was um. There's a scene where I think this is the first time you yes. meet Natsume. Um, all the brothers come in and they all compliment oh. Emma on how nice she looks. So eventually, you finally get <laughs> to poor Matt Mercer, and. I don't know if it's because the character is, like, so befuddled by the fact that his stepsister is hot to him, or because Matt forgot the oh. line and they didn't take it out. He just goes, what did it do? <laughs> <laughs> and he's just like, what did it, what did it do? And I, like, laugh so hard I bought yeah. it. I'd say really in terms of the writing, the script is a, it's just kind of questionable only because of those weird lines and those slang moments. I think that's the only reason why it would be questionable, but there's it's funny as fucking I, hell. Yeah, there's not. I think the weird lines were the only thing that kept me like hooked into Sane? the script. Other than other they than the shoujo sigh moments where everyone's confessing their love and shit. Um, but oh my god, like the stupid lines that got thrown in there that were like like the Fifty Shades line that Vic says. Yeah. And I was oh like, my I can't god! You just fucking said that. I'm like, no. Yeah. Like, thank you for making this. Yeah, un for the for the uninitiated. Copy. There's one yes. line, just one line where Futa, aka Vic, is is uh, entering into the school in their high school, and he says very confidently, "Your school is about to get Fifty Shades more cool, or something like that." And we're all like, like we weren't watching this all together, but simultaneously we all just head palmed at that line. Uh, it was so good. It's though. like the uh, it's the wambulance, yeah. which Kristen McGuire confirmed she wrote. By the way, 
Thank Shout you, out Kristen. Thanks, Kristen. Kristen. That was actually kind yeah, of beautiful. So Shout out. Shout out to you, Kristen McGuire. Thank you for letting us know how to spell your last name, by the way. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there aren't that many um, lines, yeah, I... goofy lines in the show. The whole thing is so straight and so trying to seduce. I wish that this would have been like a black comedy. That would have yeah. been funny. Been, like, but like I wish they would have written this panty and stuff. For stuff. us, that would have been great. But for the people who are actually looking for love in all the wrong places, this is probably a much better script. Yeah, I really liked it. Don't be a hater. Let me have my fucking shoujo otome dreams. God damn it. You're allowed to have that. If we, if us guys are allowed to have well animated Kiyoani key adaptations every season, then you're allowed to have at least one well done, sincere otome game. Well, thank you. Thank but you. Only one. I don't know if this would be my choice. I would probably pick yeah. something else. However, <laughs> like with Amnesia. the. Uh, or Mystic Messenger. Mystic Messenger would be the winner. Um, <laughs> but. <laughs> But as far as the directing goes, um, I listened to the commentaries and I learned that Colleen basically had three different boys that she had to pick from to voice each of the characters. So I think she did A, an A plus job at picking her cast out and B, this is like the dream. Like this is like my dream anime, basically English dub voice cast wise. Like. I could not have asked for anything more. I really could not have asked for anything more for all these A-list actors to be saying corny pickup lines and shit about basketballs and shooting in the face. Um, I feel like this yeah, is Colleen's exactly. personal harem. Well, I extent. feel that way also, and I'm so jealous of her life. <laughs> I am jealous of her fucking life. Who, which of us uh, wouldn't want but, 13 boys all hitting on us? Right, that is my dream. I'm about to say, so long as they're not my, so long as they're not my brother. Hey, 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 no, no, they're all six. Well, most of them are successful business people or athletes or good looking. So uh, I again, know, so you, long as they're not related to me, I don't care. Hey, hey, no, and they're no not. They're so not picky. related, yeah. so it's okay. Or if they're not related to me by marriage blood, as long as I can like just walk into there and be like, hey, I'm living here now. We're not actually related or our parents aren't marrying. I'm just here to live with you guys because you're hot. It's fucking living the dream. They're living the fucking dream. And this anime is living the dream for me. I loved it a lot because I love trash. I mean, the anime is not my favorite reverse harem I've ever seen in my life. However, English dub wise, which is what we're here to discuss, it is like the fucking dream team to me. And I, I, I'm like crying. I couldn't have asked for anything better. I couldn't have asked her, except for maybe Aaron Dismuke, but <laughs> that's have. okay. As someone who was forced All into right. this against his free will and was not really expecting anything great out of this, it was not as painful of an experience as I thought. If anything else, it's just kind of a boring show, it, but because it's safe. But luckily, all of the fine, fine voice actors who put their all into making this as sincere as possible stopped it from being entirely a waste of a show yeah like i i think at this point it's like this is what i wrote in terms of my overall thoughts on the dub the show is shit and doesn't deserve the decent dub it got but with the solid dub it does make the show much more tolerable <laughs> very tolerable <laughs> yeah that's the one thing that this show is Ten times more tolerable in English, and I like a lot of the people who are in the Japanese cast. But oh god, honey, I don't. Oh lord, this is like a guilty pleasure. Like I am buying the shit. Yeah, out of this. I'm, I'm only buying this but because I, feel... I am mildly curious about the OVAs and the commentaries. That's it. I'm. I'm. Yeah. I'm. I'm, I'm also gonna buy it because I'll admit. For as much shit as I'm giving Gigi tonight, it was an enjoyable pain. Yay! Much like all my Friday nights. Woo! <laughs> like, it was, it was like, it was like, it was like, please sir, may I have another? Exactly. <laughs> oh my god. I shouldn't have liked this show, but... No. I enjoyed it because there were parts of it that were genuinely sincere. It's just, I wish that this was just a girl living with 
14 guys who didn't happen to yeah. be his well, brothers, and one of them it, wasn't it, There is a end. bit of an explanation for that, if, if I may get academic for a second. Noting, oh, here we go. Noting. Here we go. You've seen a ton of anime, all you people. And you notice that most of the times, the high school characters' parents aren't present. That's not because they're dead or divorced or what have you. It's usually because the parents are just working a whole lot because that's what Japanese society demands in terms of maintaining your lifestyle. You have to work a lot, you have to put in the hours, and that just means not spending a lot of time with your kids. Because of that environment, it makes sense that you would have a show that addresses that young girls may grow up wishing they had a family to live with. And this show kind of taps into that desire and just caters to it so, so too much by giving her way too much family, which is why you start out every episode with that stupid, of course we love each other, we're a family line that makes me want to gag. Uh, mine is the Buddha one, which is the best one. <laughs> yeah. That is true. That was the best Who one. are you? Yeah. Who are you? Why am I here? All right. Well, Megan, do you have anything final to say about Brothers Conflict as a whole? And then we will finally unlock the door to our mystery dates. Yay. I uh, I do have something to say. Do you want to no! fuck your brother? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Come on, brother. <laughs> frozen. You don't live me. alone anymore. Come on and let that clam spray. <laughs> we used to be step siblings. Then the hair went white and got played. Do you want to fuck your brothers? We are actually your brothers. <laughs> Hey, bitch, <laughs> do you want to no fuck more. your brothers? No or do you pull a show in the tub? No I think an orgasm is overdue. I've started to fantasize about my twins. Go harder, Subaki! <laughs> it gets a little boring. I mean, we're all waiting for it. <laughs> Whatever Please Eric Bell's character to Please die. Stop. Seriously, Ibuki, don't die. Please, I'm sure you're getting horny. <laughs> Walter is asking why my crotch is getting big. <laughs> Mass Omi says it's because Emma is playing hard and I'm trying to get in. You only have your brothers. It's just you and the 13 <laughs> of us. Not like you're getting... I don't know that you don't want to build a snowman. <laughs> it's not like you're getting a normal dude. Do you want to fuck your brothers? It's gonna be one of your brothers. Spread your legs. Modest Wow. I just oh, like wow. to say that there are... <laughs> I think Hardy is dead. As someone who grew up in a house of boys, this is so terrible. I don't believe this. R.I.P. I think Hardy was broken after I, I said Kate hey, bitch swap. <laughs> we'll find his body tomorrow morning. Don't worry. We'll get another one out of the closet. All right. <laughs> Don't. No, no. I need that body for Shimonetta. Before I officially wrap up this episode, let's open the door to our mystery dates. Stephanie, who is your best boy based on character and dub voice? Well... Again, logically, the best boy is Louie because he doesn't want to fuck his sister. What? He's not Why do I have to go first? Because mine is so fucking obvious. <laughs> so is so it? Sexy, is it Buto? So sexy, Josh. Is it Give me my Azuza. Azuza. Give me my fucking Azusa right now. That is all right. That is so all right. Azusa has now been on the mystery date with Stephanie. Megan, who should we open the door to your mystery date for? Uh, am I allowed to have two keys? No, you get you get one. Because if she's gonna take one twin, I'm taking the other two. <laughs> They're triplets, technically. <laughs> oh. No, I'll take. I'm I'm gonna. I mean, I really like Subaki because he's really cute. But if I had to go by who took my heart, it's Natsume. All right, Megan and Natsume I on the way to the video game carnival thing. Whoop, 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 whoop. That's what they went to. They went on a date there. And he... they went to they went to Sega Joy Plus, and I'm very upset because I want to go there. <laughs> no, that's an actual place. That is an actual place in Japan. My friends went, 
And they, it is actually some of the most fun they said they have That's all year. That's funny. Out, like when they go. All right. As, as for me, my mystery date would have to be Yusuke, Matt Mercer, yeah. the redhead Sundere. No one is surprised by this except that I didn't pick Ian for once. <laughs> Whoops. And Noah, I, you got to get in on this too. What do I have to get in on this for? I am a happily married. You could pick the girl. Sorry, Just suffer sexual. with us. I does not want. Okay. All right. Fine. If, if I were to swing that way, which I don't. Or you could pick the squirrel. Why would you have to pick the? I'm or not you can pick, pick Emma. Emma. What are you talking about? She has no personality. Okay. If I had to pick one guy, if I had to swing that way, I'm gonna have to go with Louis because he's the only one who gets any sense of development. And that is worth a whole lot in a show where nothing happens. <laughs> All right, well, and our... I'll pick the squirrel. <laughs> All right, Hardy finally, wants I was squirrel. waiting Hardy. for Yay! someone to pick Hardy. the squirrel. Good job, Hardy. You, a resident Hardy. Fucker, you can't become a squirrel fucker, too. Just oh. Watch me. <laughs> oh, God. Anything can happen I, I, in this episode. All right, I'd like well... I apologize for my local pastor for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize that for about, nothing. That about wraps up our talk of the Brothers Conflict dub from Funimation. If you would like to watch the Brothers Conflict dub, feel free. You can buy it right now on DVD, Blu-ray, DVD combo pack, um, or in the limited edition box set, which is very nice and contains the mystery three OVAs that I'm the only one who's seen and can attest that they are the best part of the entire fucking series. You can also watch it streaming on Funimation Now, which if you sign up, you can get a free 14-day trial. However, you do have to put your credit card information in in order to get one. So if you don't want to watch the over 9,000 episodes and shrinking by the day because what half their catalog thousand? is going over to Crunchyroll, um, you have to cancel before your 14-day trial is up. Oh, I guess it's time to plug ourselves, ladies and gentlemen, so you oh, can all... Shut up, Hardy! You can all start it. I gotta save that for the Shimonetta oh, episode. Dear mm -hmm. sweet lord. I'm not in the Shimonetta episode, so I have to plug myself right now. All right. All right. My name is Gigi. I have been your hostess with the most. As you can find me at YouTube and on Twitter at AnimePalooza, where I talk about boys a lot and basically just flirt with everybody on my timeline. So it's not thirsty, it's flirty. Next. Wow. Oh, I guess I'll go next. Oh, I, I guess I'll go next. Hi, my name is Megan when I'm not being a douchebag and getting mad at Gigi like the rampant flaming fangirl I am. You can watch me over at Anime America Podcast Follow me on Twitter at QueenEra2 and give me money for Love Live things. Uh, also, JJ oh. is worth Incorrect, JJ is best boy, hashtag king of the ring. Uh, <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, I guess We're lucky we're sisters. I guess I'll go next. Uh, my name is Stephanie or Lilac. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Lilac Anime Review with review being spelled R E V U E, like a theater review. Thank you, Hardy, for that suggestion. Um, You're welcome. I also have a personal YouTube channel, YouTube.com. Uh, again, it has the the. I need to change the custom URL. But I need more, more subscribers to do so, unfortunately. Um, my YouTube channel right now is YouTube.com slash Bucket Banter. But Bucket being spelled B-U-K-K-I-T. Are you telling me that's yeah. not how it's spelled? Uh, where I do a variety of videos like unboxings and ramble about things. And unfortunately I have been bad lately and not uploaded things because I've been busy editing. Again, I'm always in editing hell. I'm such a workaholic. But uh, yeah, if you want to follow what I do over there, you can. And, Next. and my name is Noah Clue, and I am writing a memoir called But I Didn't Do Anything Wrong, where I list all of the terrible things <laughs> that I've been forced to do because of the people who love to watch me suffer for not having done a goddamn thing wrong in this world. I have not deserved the punishment I've gotten. But in the times I'm not being punished by these fine ladies who have nothing better to do than to torture me, I also have a YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash journeytraveler. And at the moment, I'm currently working on editing 
my top 10 cartoons seen in 2016 because I didn't see everything that was actually made in 2016, so I do a top 10 countdown of all the stuff that I just happened to have seen throughout the year. And that is the best place to watch cartoons once I actually get my butt in gear. Or you can follow me on Twitter, at NoahClue, for all semblance of cartoon and animation talk, which will become much more salty once the Academy Awards are finally over soon. Yay. Hey. Hello. Studio audience, you can plug yourself too. My name is Emilio Bandersnatch, and I own a chain of slaughterhouses across the Tyson <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> what the fuck? Have you been reading the Jabberwocky recently? I thought you were a bunch of gremlins! And no, really, my name is Spaceman Hardy, and I am a uh, I am a moderator over at the recently reopened Funimation.com forums. If you want to come over there, and uh, we can talk all sorts of all things related anime, just behave yourself, or I'll have to uh, kick your butt out. Um, you can also follow me on Twitter at Spaceman Hardy. Uh, I talk about a lot of goats. Who is totally Tom Selleck. <laughs> I am totally Selleck. Tom Selleck, by, by the way. way. thank you yes. for posting that yeah. one link to the, the manscaping your hair article today. That was a fun oh read. Oh my god, oh, yes. what? Oh, yeah. oh yes, yes. For, oh, for yes. you ladies uh, who don't know, um, men have much more hair to keep up on. And, um, well, let's just say that um, uh, the drapes do match the curtains. Oh, yes. Oh. I, I, personally, I personally have reached a Robin Williams level of hair coverage. It's, oh. it's really... Yes. That's, oh. You, you get... You get frequently confused for Yeti people and the, if you go out in the woods. Oh, but, God. But yeah. Oh, me, uh, well, I, I, this was the Twitter Valentine's... This was yeah. the Valentine's Day episode, and now I'm not feeling romantic at all. Um, <laughs> Stephanie, where are these lovely people listening to Dub Talk right at this moment? They would be listening to Dub Talk currently right here on the Dub Talk YouTube channel, which you can subscribe to if you're interested in any more of our... Weird ass shenanigans. What even are we? I I don't know anymore. A collective group of yes. <laughs> where where we spout about the most nonsensical things you may ever hear in a podcast. Um, yeah. If you enjoy, if, if seriously though, if you enjoy listening to us ramble and say words about. English voice acting. And who doesn't? Yeah, about English voice acting, then you are more than welcome to subscribe here. Um, we do apologize sometimes for things that can be said. <laughs> I do. Um, I do. Not. I do. Fucking my hole. My, my hole. My, my holes get dug even further because of this bullshit. <laughs> You're not the one who just ruined. <laughs> do you want to build a snowman? Disney's copyright lawyers. You're not the lawyers. one who people actively hate, so it's fine. People don't hate you, Gigi. Stop you're, it. N- you're not the one who gets dragged into Fujo bait just because you need to have someone suffer with you every goddamn episode. At least you're not. All right. But, but at least I you're not the person who unfortunately had a crush on a voice actor and now has sexy back every time mentioned and is now apparently an official pair, <laughs> which I'm like, f- but Ian, I don't know, <laughs> I, like, whenever, but Ian Sinclair stars in my dream every night. Okay, so do not feed us after midnight, don't get us wet, this is a horrible way to end the Valentine's Day episode, all the girls are sad, um, <laughs> I'm done, I'm going to, <laughs> I'm so fucking done. <laughs> thank thank you guys so much for listening I really do hope you have a happy Valentine's Day if you have loved ones to spend it with good for you if you're like single like us we'll probably be spending it listening to this podcast speak so, for yourself with that being said I'm spending it with my Kaneki body pillow I have a Yuri Oak body pillow so that's what's happening for me love your faces aloha I'm not single just wanted to point that out suckers <laughs> Fuck you, Noah. Yeah. Do the do line, Lilac. Do the line. I'm waiting for everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord! With that, I- I'm oh, I'm done. Have a good night. Happy Valentine's Day, Otakuwa, my friends. God damn it, brother's conflict. I tell you, the reason that 
this show is unbearable is because of the excessive incest baiting that it does. It's like, oh, we want to appeal to our demographic who said, yes, we want to fuck our brothers, but we don't want to go to jail for it. And that is what they're going to get good with the fans for like i hate that i hate so much like if, if you're gonna if you're gonna cater that just go all the way don't make them step siblings don't make them half siblings just decide that we have no standards whatsoever and that if we're related by blood it's totally fine so this show doesn't do that it just decided you know what we are going to cater to our audience without actually going that route. And I am, for one, am highly disappointed with that. So it's safe, it's non-threatening, and no advancements in the plot happen whatsoever. And I don't really enjoy that. Take some chances. I, I expect to see Brothers Conflict 2 where they have finally decided to hook Chima, Emma, M G up with somebody. They're not gonna do that though. Just, just go play the game. Just, just enjoy your smut as it was meant to be enjoyed. And that, my friends, is why I say, damn you to brothers conflict. This ship drives me to drink. And now I'm all out of Mexican mudslide. I hate you. I hate you, Gigi, so much. Ah.